mute Let's try that again good evening ladies and gentlemen from wherever it is that you are joining us um my name is beauty cotella i am your host for this evening's grace talks and uh, before we continue i would like to ask you to please uh let's do the usual you know let's do our usual greetings tell me uh, let me know that you are here let me know where you are greeting us from uh so that we can know that we are uh, not alone here i see many many of you um are coming in i don't like sitting alone in the studio i am not alone i've got a guest with us and i'm gonna bring her in shortly but before she comes in can i just get an idea who's here with me and where are they uh greeting me from so so let's check in ladies and gents let's quickly do our our regular check-in who's here and and where are you joining us from who is here with us and where are you joining us from um just uh, give me a shout out and and like we said last week um these are so nice when they are done in our in our own languages um you know there we go Ah, we have Viwe and Mama. They are joining us in Pretoria. Welcome, Sis V. But in particular, I really, really want to greet probably our eldest uh, uh, member tonight, uh, Umama Gassis Viwe. Well done um, and welcome, Mama. Thank you so much for joining us. You you are inspiring us and you are keeping us young. I see there's Bumi uh, from PE and um, she says, So there we go, there we go. Uh, she says, uh, and oh, be from there. We go, she's from Canada. Wow, um, welcome, Zianda. We have Canada in the house. Okay, let's see, let's see who else. And there, I have that way to uh, Tandasa Kunutu. She's joining us from Wellington in the Western Cape, and Botswana is in the house. Dumela Dumela Kifilwe and Bumi is in the house. Cape Town is in, of course, we've got your girl here at Cape Town. So there we go, Cape Town is in the house. Welcome guys, welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Right, um, before I proceed to go to our guest, let's do the usual. I have welcomed you, continue greeting. As I have said to you, and we say it so many times here, welcome to Grace Talks. Grace Talks is an initiative of the Real Village, and the Real Village is an organization. Um, it's a it's a pan African NGO, uh, which uh, whose mission is to reconstruct and to empower Africa through love, love with a capital L, where we believe God is love. So, as part of the empowerment wing of the Real Village, we have what we call these Grace Talks. Uh, there's a leader, Cape Town, Dangena <laughs> I, I That gave me a, a, a picture. I have an idea. I see you, uh, my lioness, Ungena Tulugudu, there. Um, as I was saying, that um, Grace Talks and the other program that uh, flights tomorrow, which is the Real Dialogues, are part of the empowerment wing um, of the Real Village, where, where we believe um, that. Um, in order for us as Africans to live our best lives, we need to just come together and empower each other. Botswana is in the house, and yes, we even have Lesotho this evening. Wow, 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 what a blessing. Tumelang, oh, is that Tumelang in Lesotho as well? I think it's Tumela, but but it's good to see you, Mate Buho. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. So so that's Grace Talks. The aim of Grace Talks, our, our, our motto as Grace Talks is living our best lives. We believe that God's grace um is given to us to give us the power to live our best lives now one of the things that we did and that led to the theater of grace ministry um which is now called theater of grace international it's got a page um on um facebook if you have not liked our page please go and like it we also have what we call theater of grace community which is um, a closed group where we come together and we do a whole lot of wonderful and amazing things on that mission, on that path of living our grace lives. There's Ndweza joining us from my hometown, King Williamstown. Welcome, Ndweza. Um, on that note, you know, at the, the Theatre of Grace community, today we were finishing the book, 
the power of a praying woman. What a journey it's been. We went on that for 30 days. What a journey it's been. Hello, Wong Yue, joining us from Queenstown. Welcome, sis. It's so good to have you here. All right. Um, now, before I go and, and invite our speaker for tonight, our guest for tonight, who I'm going to talk about, I just want to run one or two um, housekeeping issues. As you know, that the Theatre of Grace um, conversations is based on this book, right? Theatre of Grace book, which was released uh, in, in um, November last year. In fact, there's one of our guests, uh, Mamtika, we call her my Dururu. She says, Moleni from Kunube, she's my neighbor. She's not far from where I am. She's also one of the authors um, in the book Theatre of Grace. All right, so if you would like a copy um, of the book, uh, it's easy, you just simply contact me. I'm going to put now the contact details so that if you want to get yourself a copy of the book, there you go. Those are the details. Take them down so that you can just drop me a WhatsApp and we organize for you to get a copy of the book. We believe at the Theatre of Grace that sharing is caring. And for that reason, um, we don't. We say don't just buy a book for you. Buy a book for you, but also buy a book for a friend. All right. We even have my elder here tonight, Elder Simugonda. She's here greeting us. It is such an honor to have you, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. We have Pindile Api. Uh, from PE. Welcome, welcome, Pindile. So if you want a copy of the book, those are the contact details. Just um, get hold of me and we'll organize for you to get the book. But we don't believe in, in you only owning the book, but we believe in you and a friend and a sister and a neighbor owning the book. We don't share books, all right? You, you have your own and you buy one for your friend. And the price is quite reasonable. So please get hold of me um, at the end of this session and get yourself a copy of the book. And then the other announcement that I want to make is we, I would like to make an appeal to you to help me, to help us at the Theatre of Grace, at the Real Village, to make grace trend, to make grace to go viral. I really I need your help to help me spread the message of grace, all right? And the way that I want you to do that for me, I'm just going to share screen now because I sent messages to some of you and some of you got the messages and they've, have, they've done this. Some of you have not done this yet. I'm going to share my screen just to show you what I would like you to do for me. If you are watching us on YouTube, may I ask you to please go and subscribe to, if you are there, please subscribe to our channel. You can even put a reminder for yourself. There's that little clocky is for you to put a reminder for yourself. If you are on YouTube, by all means, you can just pause for a second and go. If you are on Facebook, if you are joining us via Facebook, you can pause for a minute, quickly go to uh, YouTube and subscribe there. The more people subscribe to the channel, the further and farther we can spread, spread the message of grace. So, so my request to you tonight is, can you please uh, subscribe to the Afrolog TV channel on YouTube so that we can spread the message of grace. Last but not least, um, if Ubongi says something while we are here, or if you feel that there's something that's going to benefit from the message of this evening, don't wait until the end. You can tag them now so that they can come and join. And yes, we also believe that sharing is caring. So please, by all means, you can share. If you're on Facebook, you can share. Even if you're on YouTube, you can also share so that other people can also benefit from the message of this evening. Let me not waste too much time. Let me now bring onto your screen um, our, our guest for tonight. She's my friend, and I say, and I say, she's also my partner in in religious crime. Uh, her name is Bongi Wembunge. I'm not gonna um uh, do a bio. You will notice that we don't do a big bio with our guests. Um, so I'm not gonna do a big a bio with Bongi. Uh, but because as she tells the story, we're going to get to know who she is. All I can say now is, my friend, thank you so much. One, for agreeing to be part of this project from the beginning. You know, I know how busy you are. I honestly know how busy you are, but you committed to becoming part of it. And now we are here tonight and we are looking forward to hearing about God's grace in your life. I say in the introduction of the book, these are not our stories, right? So I don't want anybody to look at us and think, oh, we've arrived or we've gotten to a certain place. No, this is us just telling, and I love the title of your chapter, a glimpse of God's grace. This is us telling about God's extraordinary acts in our lives. And, and we hope that in doing that, we will inspire another person 
to continue even if they're feeling discouraged, to also believe that if God can do it for Wongi, then maybe, just maybe, he can do it for me. If God can do that, it means God is in the neighborhood. So my friend, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and just greet us before I, I, let, I let continue. Okay, now, here's where I want us to start. Uh, you know, in the book, there are three big places. There are other places that will come, but I want us to go to the beginning, you know, and, and over to Kylie. You know, um, you know, his influence in your life, your mother, your community, your extended family. Tell us a little bit about where it began for the person that we now know as, as mm. Wongi Book. I'm going to mute myself when I'm not talking. I'm feeling a little bit of feedback. All right. But you can go ahead, my friend. Good afternoon to everyone, absolutely everyone. I feel so welcome having seen all your names pop up from different places around, you know, in and out of the country. Um, it's such a privilege to be here. Um, actually, this afternoon, I picked up the book just to go over it again. And when I was reading the chapter, I, I silently and prayerfully thanked God for your initiative. I really thanked God because um, it can happen that we don't get to a point of narrating our own stories or archiving those experiences for generations to come. Um, because when we grew up, there was a lot of storytelling. There was a lot, there was less TV, there was virtually no phones. Um, and therefore we interacted a lot and the dialogue was rich. But the time that we live in now is fundamentally different whereby um, you know, we are inundated with information. And so when I was picking up the book and, and scrolling through other chapters as well, I was like, wow, actually this is like so profound that we got an opportunity um, to think deep, to pray over and to write something. I believe that you know, um, as an African, African community, we don't do it nearly enough. Uh, and therefore, there is a chance that our kids will grow up and they they wouldn't know what we thought about a particular subject or how we perceived certain things or what our value systems meant to us. So before we get into anything, I'd really want to encourage us to to really start pinning down um, our, our our thoughts, our experiences, our values that we want the next generations to 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 know. Not necessarily that everyone's going to publish a book, but archiving that information and making it accessible is by far, you know, the rich, the, a rich legacy that we can really um, be proud of to leave behind. So thank you, Beauty, my friend. Um, uh, I, I've really, <laughs> if there's anything we've achieved in lockdown, is just to interact so much more regularly, uh, and I'm really thankful for that. All right, thank you so much, my friend. Okay, now many of us we we see and we know Bongi, Bongi, and and I think we know we know one aspect of you a lot. Obviously, we know Bongi, the speaker. You know, many have been blessed by your speaking, um, but we also know you and your you've excelled, my friend, in your field um, professionally as a as a partner at Mazars. All right, but we don't know how you got there. Okay, those that read the book have an idea of how it began. But you were not just born, you were not, you didn't, you were not born from your family. And then you went from there to the pulpit on the one hand with the Bible, on the other hand with a, a what do you call that book, a finance book, whatever, the, the books that you guys do deal with at work. So, but can we first go down to the home, you know, you, the influence one of your grandfather on the person that you are, I in fact, especially the, the the praying woman that you are, I you know those moments that we were laughing about of a long prayers that children fall asleep but no chance of falling asleep, but also when you're there, talk about your mom, you know, single mother raising four great kids. What what must it be? Like? What was it like growing up at that time? You know, and at what point did you sense already in your young age, or in fact, when you look back now and you realize, my goodness, God, even at that time was reaching out for me. Thank you for that. Um, I'm very fond of those childhood memories. Uh, it, it, and it comes with a, you know, a, a sisterhood and a brotherhood extra large, simply because of how we were raised. Mm -hmm. So from the time we 
I can remember we've um, my grandfather and mother lived in Cape Town. I think initially in District Six. You know, everyone who's been in Cape Town long enough kind of emanated from District Six, um, and through the Group Areas Act. You know, they were moved to Elsa's River. So they stayed in Elsa's River for a number of years. By the time I was born, they had also been moved from Elsa's River into Guguletu. Um, I think in Langa and then Guguletu, because um, I think Langa is, is the oldest township in Cape Town. So uh, much of our family is Kualanga, and then we moved our grandparents moved to Ekukuletu and that's where, you know, um, our family home is, uh, Ekuks. What I loved most was that it was such close-knit in terms of family. So so they were from place to place, but when we ended up Ekukuletu, you know, you could throw back, uh, uh, we grew up in section two, you could throw back 89, so you could throw back a 91, and that was my aunt's in-laws. So I had another set of uh, grandparents there. You throw forward a 56, my uncle lived there with his family, you know, and 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 so everyone was kind of in reach uh, from from a section two. And that was really fantastic. I just want to spend a few minutes talking about my grandfather because I think you'll understand a lot if I tell you about the kind of man that he was. Um, I love him. I loved him. <laughs> So, you know, it was a big man. He was a big mm. man um, mm. and, and, and really big built and very tall. Mm. And um, I think back in the day when he used to work, he was a mechanic um, at, at the um, army base airport, Epan Island. So mm. they fixed their brains or whatever, whatnot. Um, and then, you know, but for the greater part, when I was around, he was not really working. So my grandmother um taught and so did my mother but my my grandfather was at home so he mm. was the one who looked after the kids um and you know i remember in the Kokba, you know being being the last born for a long time before my brother, my younger brother came along afforded me the opportunity of really spending years with him as mm. as i went to school so i never went to crash um or anything like that um i spent a lot of time with him and many times we would get up in the morning and take those to school cross over to a, a you know a, a, a every year and go drop those at school and come back we had our own routine in the morning it, it um it, i don't remember my grandfather bathing me you know it, it, that's mm -hmm. just how he instilled us but just be you, just look up don't know how to look after for your, after yourself but he would always pick out the clothes I would wear every day. Mm. And it would be a pants and a dress, whether mm. we we're in the house or whether we we're going somewhere. But, you know, what, what we did a lot before the others get, came back from school was that the um, we have a kick, you know, a, 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 there's, there's, there's like, it's like a hostile environment. And okay. he, meet his friends there he had two friends that he met there but when he comes in he's going to put me on the counter and have a big cup yamacheu at in and that was <laughs> assignment <laughs> and the three of them three or four friends would sit around the table in low um mm. and, and you know that, that was the thing um, and then when it was time to, for school, school was over, we'd then leave and, and go fetch the, the kids from school and then back home. So by the time I started grade one, I was very enabled. I knew I had to come from school, wash my socks, wash my shirt um, and, and, and put my things in order. You know, he is. He also was a prayer giant. Mm, yeah. Um, because he would pray. But before prayer time, just as the sun goes down, salt water <laughs> and embarrass us. So he'll take the salt water and, and start a feffing upon there. You know, he, he, he was fascinated by witches. Uh, so he would salt water and getting rid of the witches, you know, <laughs> and it on and on and on outside the yard, in the yard, everywhere. 
Um, and, and, you know, it, it was just like, it was the most embarrassing time because everyone was out there on the road. Um, but prayer time, especially in the mm. evening, we mm. would not miss that time. So he sits there like a king with a cane in hand. Um, it's just watching in Dokokuba who's going to fall asleep so that mm. he can, you know, and, 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 and if you, if you, if you manage to duck prayer and go sleep early, no, by the time he's, is 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 taking his salt water, you are going to get it. So mm. there was miss prayer time. Um, and that was it. He was very generous. Um, mm. so Nkulu would cook early in the morning so that if there's a visitor, all the visitors are dished out food. Um, mm. at our family home, we had two brothers from Ekumb in the mm. Eastern Cape who lodged at our backyard. Um, mm. Their wives came time and again. So we had, we were a family with families. That's how mm. we were growing up. And mm. so that father, you know, very stern, very loving, but very diligent. Like he was an author authoritarian. Authoritarian, um, the way he 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 raised and groomed us, um, and so really, you know, in in as much as he you you never questioned his love, he was firmly loving you, but he was not cushioning you from reality. He would mm -hmm. throw you there in on the in the deep end, and you you have to swim swim or swing, uh, mm -hmm. uh, swim or sink. So that's that's the environment where we 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 really grew up. Um, you realize, but I don't really speak about my grandmother that much. Uh, mm, she yeah. passed on quite early. She passed on quite early, and and the experiences I have with her, she was a, she was a typical teacher. She was a typical di disciplinarian. It, the memories I have of her is when we were misbehaving, and she would pull us by the ear, you know. Mm. <laughs> um, and 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 so we spent the, a longer time with my grand grandfather now when my mother in those primitive years she was teaching she would frequently teach um further away from home so she spent many years teaching in Fulin, and she has a house there she'd come over on weekends so our grandfather was the parent you know she he was looking after everyone uh basically and when it was lunchtime i had to go fetch my cousins from a 56 uh, because it's lunchtime and they would come and we would all kneel in front of Dadom Kolo with one spoon, one, uh, you know, with a big bowl, basically, feeding all of us with the same spoon. <laughs> I remember those those moments. There were no gems there. No, the gems were not as potent at no. that time. <laughs> so, um, but I do have very slim memories of me, um, you know, um, you know, at the at the top, uh, at the intersection of 53A and, and 56, is a church Ethiopian. It, it mm -hmm. a dope. So I remember that I spent some time there. So I reckon that that was the time he, he was busy with something and then um, he would just negotiate that I spend the morning there while he mm -hmm. goes and takes care of something. But I was never really formally registered um, from that perspective. So he had a lot of influence mm -hmm. in my life specifically. Mm -hmm. Um, and and I was never a child that wanted uh, or, or, or that looked forward to caning. So I'd rather be on the good side of his law, um, you know, getting all my ducks in order <laughs> in a row. Uh, and, yeah. and really drove, that drills down uh, a certain ethic um, when it comes to discipline, um, I suppose. So my grandfather, you know, unfortunately, um, he remarried. So when he remarried, he was staying a, a, a block away from us, 57, which was also you know, to see him. But then they, they bought a house at Kailicha earlier on. And back then, Kailicha was bare. Um, mm. Unfortunately, you know, he got um, pneumonia. And we couldn't understand for such a big, strong man why mm. it had taken him down uh, and, and succumbed to it. Um, and that, that's what took his life. It was... It was really sad, I think, mm. uh, at those years, you know, in everyone felt it differently um, mm. in their siblings. So 
after that, I think my mother spent much more. I mean, she had to be present um, yeah. in our home, Ekugule, too, um, and really. But when we were 1990, she decided to buy a house. Your mother? My mother. Mm. Um, and we hated it. We really mm. hated it. You know, um, my friend, Kukule, too, has a certain... <laughs> You know, when you land in Jobek for business, there's an energy, right? Mm. It's mm. a similar thing. Kukulet has got its own energy. So, <laughs> it, <laughs> so it was already in our veins, you know. So I'm gonna say and and, mm. and you know our our childhood was um in as much as we the, there was always authority and discipline, there was also mm. a lot of free time. Uh for instance, we would take uh, the river bank, uh, uh, just, you know, on the other side of NY50, and we'll play in the river until we got to the station, unsupervised, mm. come mm. back. Um, and there was a time we, 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 we got bikes, um, we drive the bikes way beyond into section one. Um, the only, we never went quite to section three because we were afraid, you know, um, mm. when unfamiliar with them. So, so our childhood was really, you know, uh, um, made up of, of 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 all of those things. I grew up very close knit with my with my older brother because we're only two years apart. But that was the vibrant life, uh, you know, mm. within a Um And we, we, when whenever we were out playing, um, no one really looked for us. We were mm. just our own thing during the, during the day um just around the corner you know you had Otakumaduna, you had the Kintolos, you had the yezas you had the you know you know everyone knew everyone what i love about how we've grown up is is the spirit of ubuntu you know back in those days when yeah. there was a development we would go to that house and we would get a collection slip that's how we would spread the bereavement. We go from house to house asking for mm. donations for that family. Um, mm. While, as soon as those news broke out, um, our mothers and sisters would start to bake scones and 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 send buckets of scones to that home for prayer mm. meeting. You know, even mm. a drunkard walking past a house that has been bereaved would 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 would, would uncover his ha head, mm. you know, uh, and and try to walk straight. You know, you'd you'd. <laughs> down you you silently you know that's how we have grown up so i felt so disorientated when we moved to kailicha i was 11 mm. um, but i let later learned that it was it was my mother's plan she said to me mm. i could see how you guys were growing up and i didn't like what you were possibly going to become so Going to say a Kailicha was a backward move. For you um, guys. It was slow. Mm. It was slow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, we had nothing to do. Yeah. Before I go to Kailicha, my friend, because in Kailicha, we're going to talk about your mom um, yes. and, and her influence on... And I think especially on your academics, but obviously as a single mother, really everything. But we just want to stop and honor uh, Uta Masana because of all the things that I'm sure he taught you, but the prayer bone, you know, the 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 the, the, the influence of, of, of prayer at such mm. an early age, although you guys were being forced, uh, yeah. you know, the cheese or the to, to go and pray. And I think sometimes we underestimate that in, in our children, um, although we, we, I don't know if we can, these mm. days, as, as young parents, we can uh, 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 do what our parents did to bring us to prayer meeting, but the power of prayer on yeah. children, even yeah. as they are unconscious, is building and developing something in them that will put them in very good stead um, when they grow up, because now prayer will not be strange. You basically, they get to a point where nobody's going to shambok them to come to prayer anymore. Mm -hmm. But because they are used to it, they can actually just wake up and pray. So I want to honor uh, that my son for that role. I'm sure many, but for that role and for the prayer warrior that he gave us. So we mm -hmm. thank him and for, for, yeah. for allowing himself to be a dispenser of God's grace. 
Uh, he didn't know. He doesn't know. He will only know in the sea of glass just how far those actions of his took us. But anyway, let's go to Kylie Chan now. Let's slow. Let's go to the slow yeah. Kylie Chan and, and Mama. Yeah, I think you know you know saying Kylie Chan like we frequently laughed with my brothers. Like, oh my goodness, uh, we have no idea what we're doing here. But, but you know, um, for the longest time when I arrived there, I was always wanting to find my way back to um, Kukuletu. Mm. And what I now can see that my mother did very well was that I think after a year or so, after two years or so, I started to make friends um, within the area. We lived in Epagamisa. And therefore, you know, I found a connection because I had two friends, one with Charmaine and one Nongyebo. And Nongyebo was also on a Google it. So I thought, you know what? On Sundays, guys, must quell any train and find our way, spend the Sunday in a Google it and whatever or not. So my mother <laughs> would wake up and give chores. Fine, I'll do the chores quickly, quickly, quickly. And then my friends would arrive and then she'd say, um, please go and buy a veg for me at the station, yo, take the money, we rush, you know, we go buy a Sunday veg, mm -hmm. and we'll come back on a veg. When we get back, and we are about to, to get out of the door, she'd ask, is the veg going to peel itself? <laughs> I expected that, <laughs> peel the veg. <laughs> then we start peeling the veg, you know, we start peeling the veg. Hey, when we are done, we are heading for the door. It must but cook. It's late now, girls. There's no point. <laughs> <laughs> so that is how, that was her trick every time. Um, it kills the mood. It absolutely mm -hmm. kills the mood. Um, mm -hmm. And therefore, we slowly, you know, um, learned to embrace the environment that we're in. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. find our own action and initiative where we were. Uh, and I think then we let... Kylie shall grow on us, and and we found our identity within it, um, and we had a lot lot of time that we could you know spend here and there. You know, my brother within within the summer months will will watch cricket the whole day, literally, and mm. and when the season finishes, we'd go outside and play cricket. You know. Um, and 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 therefore, you know, we had friends that we had built in the community. We went to the same schools, uh, and so we what it started to build a life. But my child was really exciting. I mean, I remember in high school, we were so naughty. I must tell you, I was a very vibrant child. Like I couldn't, like I was an extrovert. I was an of it um and i remember when we were coming back from school you know uh, we traveled by train and said goes i train and when mm. it went to kylie Chas station where we get off we jump off while it's in motion you know that that was just fun for us yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, we i think we did what we we could to make it yeah what yeah my childhood ought to have looked like yeah wow but i'm thankful that for that stillness. i think in that mm. stillness um mm. i remember you know i just i remember focusing on my academics by that time i mm. think i was just like four mm. focused heavily on my academics and whatever what not um, i think i was also tired of being told um that i was i was always off you know i was um, always loudest, you know. They they call me the, the lawyer of the family because I had an answer for everything, you know. I and and so from from in in high school, I started um, one of our friends. This is what changed the narrative in my personality. Because because that's what I wanted to ask you. When did the strong work ethic begin? Um, and but but you know, I'm basically leading you to where you're going to now because because that's something I know you for. And I'm not the only one that knows you for that. When when did that very strong, disciplined bongi uh, yeah. uh, uh, start to emerge? Yeah, exactly in standard four. I remember mm -hmm. I was doing standard four. I could hope um, an Adventist school. I was mm -hmm. not an Adventist, um, nope. and 
and and and really you know i was just like i i just like buried myself in the books i think it's one of the few years that i was a straight a student like i mm. literally i put so much effort in it um i was tired of fighting with my mother you know um and 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 really being uh you know a child she she, she couldn't anticipate you know she she just didn't know what was coming next you know um i remember one time i got such a hiding uh mm. my brother had same set, set of friends so so we meet up with a friend and uh you know the boys um are playing i don't know what you call it in english but ikerem it it's not a snook game uh, it's a board it's a Cape Town game i have no idea what that is it, it's a, it's yep. a board game that looks like chess but okay. it's okay. a bigger board where you use stick to move the it's a typical boy game okay. <laughs> so my friend and i you know we played there and 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 we, you know we started to fight about uh, you know typical things um so when she heard that i got into that squabble i i got such a hiding from mm. home um but i want to say that you know with the friends that i had made i i took up ballroom dancing many people don't know i may, i i i retired from ballroom at a championship level <laughs> i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> wow so, uh, for a good few years uh, i was ballroom dancer i had endless trophies at home you know mm. uh, at a competitive level um and 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 really when when we made friends you know we we used to grow, go together as a group etc cetera, etc cetera. but i remember quite distinctively there were two two friends of us which which were guys um and unfortunately one time you know they came to check on my friend who was in the area as well they couldn't find her they came to my house um and they were afraid of my mother they were afraid of coming in and two houses away from from me was was a lived a policeman and unfortunately that night he was drunk and and he had his uh, service pistol so mm. when he saw the guys he was like get out of here get out of the area because i don't know you uh and the guys were lingering around and he came back and he saw them he pulled the the trigger shot the guy um wow. the head he died on the spot that was traumatic Mm. that was traumatic and i think that's what really flipped my 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 that that trauma i believe flipped my personality around i mm. became introverted i became quiet uh so spent a lot of years like there i think the remainder of the years in high school two or three years um mm. just you know my older sister was into ballad music she always played that music on on sundays and I was just chilling on the couch um mm. i'm this because you'll understand my personality now from what i'm, sh- I'm sharing with you mm. so when she used to play that ballad music i never liked television because i always never liked being given everything my mind can't mm. think you mm. know, and process like and everything you know, can I, so i learned to love listening to radio i read a lot i i thought a lot um so i built i rebuilt my own value system um i on the couch you know <laughs> on a sunday afternoon i i really you know um we still you know uh, hang out with the same friends but i think from from there emanated a quieter more reserved personality mm um uh in me so so that that i think it has has gone on for life but what i'm grateful for is really the opportunity of having interfaced with all of these changes um mm. some of them rapid and some of them not but mm. being sustained you know um and this is where you will understand the 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 the, the, the real beauty yekalelo uh, kata tomkhulu because when we moved to yekailicha we never went to church we just stayed at we just never went to church and then one day my mother got up and said i'm going to church and i'm going to the adventist church i just want to go to that church and for a good 2 3 years she was going alone you know none of us were interested <laughs> uh um, so when i was in grade level 11 she invited me because i think ibanda like in zondelelo was going to be established as a company so it was a 
big thing and she invited me. And that's the first time I went to the Adventist church uh, when I was in Standard 9. Um, and, and, and from that day on, each one of us kept, uh, you know, came in one by one uh, at different intervals. Um, and, and, and it was a point and we never, we never questioned why we were going to church because we had been raised that way. Um, and, and, and really, you know, the, 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 the beauty of getting into an Adventist church and learning all these different things. Um, and it was for me, the biggest thing, um, that I took up out of it, they prayed a lot and there was a lot of emphasis on Jesus which you do not find in the old apostolic church. You also read the Bible for yourself. So that was quite enriching and powerful. Um, and that made, that kept me interested. Uh, you know, I stayed in the baptismal class for five years. You know, I, I, I was looking at that and I was asking myself, what, what, what are you missing in this five years? Yeah, I had a lot of questions. That was just not gelling. That was just not coming together. Uh, no, I had a lot of questions. So, so really, you know, um, I it grew on me. I took it slowly mm. because I was not, I was not desperate to be there. But mm. I must say something. You know, I'm not a musician, and I, I, don't, I don't really sing um, at a at a at a glamorous level. I'm a part of the congregation, but I would sit and I would enjoy the music, even when on days when I was not singing along. But the feeling of just being a part of the congregation when that music came. It, mm. it was phenomenal. It was just I phenomenal. Know. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Look, I want to go to the my favorite story in your in your favorite part of your story. Um, we're going to skip now quite a bit um, mm. just to, to make up time. Um, you know, your high school life and your undergrad will come through as we talk. But... Then at some point comes a man, comes the ring, comes the marriage. I think about 2008, Nick. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because I remember, I remember you guys going for counselling on the same weekend we were getting married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, touching base with with and that's, I think that's the first time I I saw you guys, and um, but I wanna I wanna come to the story you know um because life uh, the, the 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 you know the, the 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 simple formula of life you grow up you go to school you get your qualification you get married you have children and you you you, you have two and a half children and you know you live in a nice beautiful house beautiful car you know the simple straight line never really happens you know it doesn't happen for anybody but some some people are luckier in that although they have challenges but they're not as 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 as, as terrible as, as strong. But some go through uh, eye-opening uh, uh, experiences. But in those experiences, uh, we now know um, we see how God uh, shows up in a, in a mighty way. So I want us to go uh, to because up until uh, five months into the pregnancy, everything was you know falling into place. You guys had your plans, and I want us to talk about those plans. You know, eyeing that expensive um, camp court or baby courts, and then for some reason it doesn't happen. And thereafter, the series of events that led to who we now she's about, about eight years old now. Tell me about that story because that story really, really touches me. Um, of how your first born daughter was born. Yeah, thanks for that. You know, we knew that we were um, ready to have children. The year I was at Forte doing my um, postgrad, so it was our third year of marriage, and you know I had done my postgrad uh, through Unisa, and I was not successful. <laughs> um, I failed. I passed two, and I failed two. So I had to repeat all four. That's what you do for accounting honors. Um, so I was really disheartened. I didn't know what I had to apply in myself to get a different outcome. Because I believed that, you know, I was working and I was really pouring all my, my all into this. So I went to study at Forte. Um, my husband got me in, you know, he registered everything and, and I got in. So in that year, I was studying at Forte. We knew that um, 
you know, we are ready to have uh, uh, children as soon as the next, the, as soon as I wrap up that academic year. So while I was still, um, you know, using my contraceptive pills, I was already praying for this unborn child. Um, but on an excited mood, you know, I would like, I, I, I was just declaring, uh, you know, goodness. You know, thank you, God. She's just, she's so beautiful. She's so bright. She's 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 chosen good friends. Thank you that she's a positive influence in life. Thank you, Lord, that the clarity and thought. You know, all of those good things. Um, that I, I love that. Sorry to interrupt. I really loved that. You know, uh, saying it uh, because often we ask, Lord, may she be, may she be, may she be. So, so you were praying in faith, so to speak. Yeah. You know, yeah. thanking yeah. God for what already is, in a way. I loved that. I, I thought I, I learned something. I, and more. I spoke in the present. You know, I spoke mm. in the present. Yeah. Um, mm. You know, thank you that she she's in high school. She's she's selected a good career. Thank you that she, you know all of those thank yous. Uh, uh, you know, every, every single promise I could remember uh, by heart from the Bible. So when we wrapped up that uh, you know academic year and I came back to Cape Town. Uh, it was all done and I had gotten my honors. You know, it was, we we're absolutely elated. It meant progression in my career, you know, passing my honors. It was the, it is still the bottleneck of the industry. Many prospective charter accountants are sitting at honors level trying to get through honors so that they can write board exams. Um, so really when 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 that came along um, and, and we, we, we conceived, oh, we're so thrilled. Um, and, and, you know, we, we, everything was just happening, you know, as planned. And it was like, um, I do want to say we're almost proud about it. We were, um, that everything is, it seems effortless, um, effortlessly conceiving, effortlessly this, we are sorted in our careers. Everything is, you know, uh, <laughs> uh going according to plan, um, and, and, and lo and behold, I still remember Friday afternoon on our checkup for 20, 25 weeks. Our doctor mm -hmm. were quite, quite, quite humorous, you know, it's like, oh no, this baby's doing well, da, 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 and everything is hunky dory. And it was a Friday afternoon, went into the weekend. Um, but by the Sunday night, because it was our first child, I did not know what contraction, contractions feel like. I hadn't even gone for the classes yet. So mm -hmm. I was like, I've got pains on my back, you know, my back is on fire. Kept, you know, waking up my husband here and there. But it was very clear by 5 a.m. my water broke. And mm. I knew uh, something was was amiss. Uh, so we mm. found that I told him everything. He said, come, come now. I still got into the shower, you know, I just took a shower and, and we got quickly um to, to, to Cape Town. So when I went in, it was clear that the baby one was on his way. Um mm. the was doubt he said to me 50 percent of life 50 percent wow. making it um i'm gonna be a steroid for the maturity of the lungs right now and this will help to um re not reverse the the, the 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 labor but stop the labor and then after 48 hours i'll give you another steroid for the lung maturity and then we'll let it be mm. you know, i was in hospital, as soon as I was stable, I was moved to um, Christian Barnard, which which he said to me, there's a specialist doctor for these kinds of cases. So mm. we were there um, and I remember that, you know, after the second steroid, I was taken off the drips and we were asking the nurse, oh, what's going to happen now? But why can't I stay on this drip for until, you know, for the next 15 weeks, it's too early. But it was clear, staying on the drip was not, um, was not, was not an option for us. So the doctor came in, he saw me and he said to me, look, we need to give the baby a fighting chance. So you're off the drip, we'll wait for nature, nature to take its course, but the baby needs the struggle of birth. Uh, so that, let's go. That boggled my mind. <laughs> <laughs> that was for me mind boggling to expect this mind. child who is not even yeah. fully formed. Yeah. So to my friend, make was, way in. when he said hmm. that, Nick, let's wait for nature to take its course, I was relieved because I knew I could pray my way out of this, you know, hmm. 
how mm. to keep the baby inside the womb as long as possible. And I was legitimately disappointed when mm. I was on the Thursday, the baby turned, you know, its head down to the abnormal. I just knew it, but mm. it, it came over up. Um, mm. And and really that night um, she was coming clearly. Mm. So that came at about eight-ish, um, said, okay, she might come in the morning. Um, I don't live too far away from here. I'm just a call away. Before he left, it was clear. I know there's no waiting. You know, two hours later, um, she was out. So it was, it, I, I can't say it was a different delivery because I, I, I didn't know anything better or none the wiser. But immediately when she came out, she was screaming. Um, and somewhat I could understand because, you know, the complication of childbirth, she, she was probably in the canal for longer than, than she should have been because it was just an experience. Um, so when the baby came out, she, she was angry. I think she was feisty at, at that moment that, hey, why did you keep me in the tunnel for so long? <laughs> Before before I go there, my friend, before I go to that loud cry, there is a moment in the story before she's born when I think after you get told that she must come uh, mm. naturally. And, and I think as you've, you've already said, that you, you, you now knew that is way it was way um, out of your hands. But I want to pick on, because those words hit me the first time I read them, and, and they hit me again this morning as I was going through the story, this this nurse, the sister. Yes, yes, yes. The sister that said to you, uh, 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 don't worry, yeah. Jesus is here. You know. That was for me a seminar. This sister was on my left-hand side. Yeah. Mm. Facing forward. The midwife, that's the word I'm looking the for. Midwife. And my husband was on my right hand side. And all the sisters mm. said, look, just face the wall because mm. you don't want to see all of this. Um, mm. And you know that you know, she knew this was a complex delivery. Yeah. She just kept saying to me, do not mm. worry. Jesus. Yeah. Hey, man, I kept hearing I that. I love worry. that. Jesus is here. I love and that. This, this is the same midwife that we had been talking to uh, a mm. day Yeah, wanting ways of staying on the trip, you know. Mm. Uh, let me share, you know, uh, the, 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 the beauty of that. So mm. the fluid that gets into your body mm. goes straight to the outer layer of your womb mm. and it rests there. So okay the baby wants to contract to come mm. out it stops the contraction it's 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 a it's a, what what do they call it can it's a positive reinforcement i think that's what mm. my describe described to me and as, as as the birth you know wants mm. to take over the fluid stabilizes uh, 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 him. Mm. It's our lives you know we have got to have instances of contraction mm. There's an outer layer that says, mm. Mm. I'm control. So it was mind blowing for me. So mm. when the same midwife was, was, was in the theater, it calmed me. I don't want to lie. So irrespective mm. of that, you know, the baby came out. They told me beforehand, we are going to connect her. We are going to cover her with plastic and we are going to rush her to the neonatal. You are not going to mm. see her. Uh, mm. So I panic when all of that was happening you know mm. but but the presence of god in the yeah. of life is just mm. mind-blowing you know mm. and next weeks that flowed from there um we're, we're really testament to that because mm. i said hey man, look at her she is calm she's mm. gaining weight and sometimes she's not gaining weight as much as we want you know, uh, she was. But when she came out, she was extremely small. I think you, you, you. <laughs> she could not even grab your pinky no. by her one hand. She couldn't, she couldn't even grab my pinky. Um, in, 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 in fact, I, I, I want to, I want to show you something because you know, I, I, this, this just makes this thing land um, with, with, with our audience uh, mm. because this is. 
this is this is what we are talking about when she was five five days old. Mm. So she was five days old and she could um I'm going to unshare that if it's still flickering on your side. Ne? It's flickering on my side, yeah. But I think Let's we get the idea. Yeah. You get the idea. So she was yeah. incubated and, mm. and, and connected. We couldn't really touch it. Her skin was almost transparent. Uh wow. but is a miracle because every time I would sit next to a cubicle and we would, you know, I continued to declare promises on her the life. The song, the song that you I, were singing. I, I just uttered every promise that I could remember mm. off the top of my head over mm. her. And mm. and when we would sing 160, 162, she would preach this child because mm. at home, when we're still expecting at prayer time, when we sang 162, she would kick, you know, inside it. So it was, it was mind blowing for me to experience this. Here she is out, and she still hears the hymn. She still mm. calls the hymn, and it was a promise that God is in control. You know, yeah, that is here. My mantra in life: God is in control. It's, 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 what happens, God is in control. So it leveled me that 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 experience because it was tough. It was yeah. tough, um, and not all the babies were doing well. I think it, even two weeks into the experience, we lost one baby. You know, it was tragic. You could cut, you know, the tension in 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 the ward, but it kept us going to know that everything is in the hand of God. So what I said to my husband after a couple of weeks, I said, are you noticing that this child is not really struggling? I think this experience is for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said that because it dawned on me, like you were asking me about the court. So when we went shopping, we mm. had a court in mind. But when mm. we went shop and saw all of these lay beds and what what him and we're swayed now we were swayed we wanted to get the best of the best but we have a mm. principle that when we make a big purchase let's sleep over it mm. and we slept over it and we didn't really go back but mm. after this experience you know the risk here was that you have financially independent expecting parents who think they don't mm. need much the hand of God in raising oh, yeah. money mm. can do it. They've got it covered. And so God was 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 you know you know God in his claimed his place. He hey, claimed my this hey. experience. Says, you I know what? That. I will I'm reduce charge, it yeah. to nothing. I will mm. reduce it to nothing so mm. that you date my place in your life and in your the lives of your children to come hey. and know that it doesn't take financial independence to hmm. raise you hey. Know, hey. Hey. what hmm. was clear was that there was nothing we could do to keep this child alive there was nothing no no when her no. iron dropped hmm. and she need, she, they couldn't give her medication she, they needed to inject her with blood and they mm. couldn't take blood. She had to get blood from the blood bank. There was mm. absolutely nothing. We had no role that we could physically mm. be proud of. It mm. emptied me mm. as a mother that yeah. I actually don't know a thing. And that and really you gave her, And you gave her the name. Kazimla, talk to us about that. That, <laughs> that name, she's preaching to me every time I see her. A every time I see her, because yeah. I know what's going on. Mm. Yeah, so you know that name to shine. I tell her every time, your mm. name is shine, but you are not the bearer of the light. You yeah. are the of the light that never mm. goes. So mm. when mm. You like my child, whether you like it or you don't like it, you don't have a choice. You mm. have to get the light shine. That, mm. Uh, mm. to shine. So, so really, you know, um, this experience um, has taught us many things. And, and how I, is I, she doing now? How is Kazimla doing now? Is she, she's, <laughs> she's shining. 
name, you know? <laughs> you know, she. I, I realized when we were having our second child and the doctor was like, oh, I'm having deja vu. How mm. is she? Oh, she's perfectly fine. She's mm. in, she, she's three and a half years old. She started school. She's thriving. Yeah. And he asked, what um, deficiencies that she have? I said, she's perfectly fine. She's mm. Ha, you know, and 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 I'm ref I reflect every time I get her report card, yeah. I'm because mm. she's excellent at school. She's academically strong. Yeah, can no, make it. And then they didn't expect her to not have any challenges health wise. And then now, so mm. God keeps on demonstrating His power and might and saying, mm. I will claim you." for myself. This is mm. what I'm actually meaning. I, I just want to share one experience that drove the love of God into my, into the core of my soul. Mm. When she was still in ICU, I was working. I went back to work after a week. Um, and the, so, so you express the milk, you bottle mm. the milk, you the milk, you write your child's name, and how many meals they are there and the date and you freeze it. Every time you go to the hospital, you take it. You take mm. the milk, you know, it's your daily routine. Yeah. So my 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 left breast got an abscess. Wow. And it was one of the nurses in the neonatal took a look at it and says, you, uh -uh, there's a doctor on the second floor, please go and consult because this is... Um, it's, it's not good. And stop pumping the breast. But if you stop pumping the breast, you, you might lose the milk supply. Mm. I went to see the doctor and she told me one thing that really made me a little mad. Um, she said to me, no, I'm going to have to operate on this. I'm going to have to put you under. But mm. um, I want you to know it takes more than breast milk for you to mother a child. Oh, Monsieur. My child is, is <laughs> you, and you are, she needs this milk. You are telling me. <laughs> and, and, and I thought, you know. So, anyway, I went for the op. Mm. It was a procedure, and she gave me tablets. And she says, Take these tablets if you want. They mm. will dry, and then that's it. Mm. Um, you don't want you need to express the both breasts every three hours as you are usually doing mm. and it will be very painful so we came back you know um we had lunch and now there's the critical moment because you know when you're a new mother you you have got to consistently feed the baby or express the milk otherwise it's excruciating pain so so you know i said to my husband i'm not going to take these pills I'm going to express. And he said to me, okay. So I, you know, I set up my stuff in the room. And it's, you know, he prayed with me. And then he said, Yeah, good luck. I'm just going to close the door. You'll find me in the other room. <laughs> you know, it was scary to to witness that. And I remember sitting there and saying my own silent prayer. And I put the breast pump, I connected it, I switched off the plug. And I expressed in the first 30 seconds, the stitches came off. You could feel the stitches coming off. You saw milk and blood. You saw milk and blood. And I just clutched my teeth and I just looked out the window. I just knew I had to do this for the benefit of this child getting this milk. And that experience, it dawns on me when he said Jesus for for the joy set before him I was enduring for look I could have mm. decided not to breastfeed I could have it, it was mm. not but it was my but when I went through that when I had to mm. endure that um and 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 this dean you know mm. uh throwing milk and discarding it for three days mm. So that the supply does not dry because I was in ICU and I thought I had to 
option. So mm. when I read the Bible, it says that for the for the joy Yo. set before him, he what what daily says oh yes, he actually mm. endured the cross. He he took mm. and on the shame. I had an experience that was a fraction, a small fraction mm. of what Jesus went through. It enriches the Bible. So that when mm. I come to the word and when I think of God's love, I think with my mm. computers, behold, you know, because God, behold what manner of love has been bestowed mm. upon her, that we should be called sons and daughters of God. It, yeah. It's a big inheritance in itself. So mm. I'm just saying that the valleys and the mountains mm. are there for the benefit of us getting to eternal life. They point us to God. Absolutely. They point us, they point us to God. Hey, my friends, so, let's move. I'm worried about time. It always leaves us. Let's move <laughs> to your to your 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 your, your journey to because there's something there that you that you that you lay out in the book that I think is powerful. Your journey to partner. You know, when we last, when we were in the story now, when we last uh, saw you, you had gone to Fort Hare, okay, mm. to study there full time. Take us through that. You know, how did you get there? Why did you now feel the need to to to, to do that? Um, why did you not stop, Bongi, at at your undergrad? And, mm. and 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 just do your call, especially seeing that so many uh, people were, were failing, were not making through these honors, and and therefore just letting it go and just continuing in another direction, maybe even paying more. What pushed yeah. you? You know yeah. what what went on with you? Let me start here. Young women, mm. it's very important. To you are asking me what pushed me. <laughs> you know, it says you have wind beneath your wings. <laughs> One of the things that I, I love to hate sometimes, my, my husband, you know, on a scale, so motivator. You know, he can he can make me believe I can climb my Mount Everest. You know? <laughs> and 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 when he's set on something that you can do this, you know, he will pump you with all the motivation that you need, you know, and, and, and make spaces and, 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 and move everything so that you can get there. Selfless, selfless in his pursuit to see others thrive. I cannot, I cannot not acknowledge the role he has played in my professional life, because I think if it wasn't for him, I would have just chilled and said, ah, man, you know, this thing, this thing is elusive. So let me just, let me just leave it there. You know. So you know, it's 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 critically important in how far we go in life, the life partner that you choose. Yes. True. It can make you a dwarf mm. or set your soul on fire. Hey. So when we choose our life, and, and you know, I, I might sound wise now because I'm, but I did pray for, for this husband. So I knew this was a choice of God, but now I can see why. Not mm, only yeah. because he brought me there professionally, but you know, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of things that we, we, we talk about that, that builds character. You know, uh, uh, my husband would say to me one day, you know, dear, you have got to be prepared to be inconvenienced in order for you to help someone. That's the price of helping someone to be inconvenienced, you know? So it, it, it there, there really is a, you know, no, no easy victories and the humility that is in exchange is priceless because you learn to read them. But it's best when both of your accountability is sitting above you, which is Christ as the reference point. Because then you are both accountable to something that is higher than you. And you hold each other to those high examples, you know, it's high standards. In little things and big things. You know, we got married in 2008. In our union until today, no one has not gone to work 
me faker is sick leave. It just does not happen here. Mm. Mm. You will yeah. not not honor going to work because you are faking your sickness. No, 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 no. It's not acceptable here. Mm. So you mm. hold each other to those. And that's how, you know, you never conspire to sin. Mm. Together. Mm. Time to unpack that. But mm. yeah. it's powerful, you know. So, so really, you know, in my in my professional life, I passed my honors, which is one hello. So mm. I had to go through two board exams, two separate board mm. exams. And the first one was tough. Also because um, you know, I had given birth, I was I was like a new mother to, to a complex situation. I tried my best, but I also, you know, it, it, it was, I, I didn't really have divide, you know, undivided attention going for that board exam. So I didn't make it the first time mm. around. Second time around that I tried to, to write my board exams, um, I gave it my all. And I still failed. Hey, she goes, yeah. At that time, it was painful. Mm. At the time, it was the most painful. Mm. And so the third time, I had to do something different. But I had three months before I, mm. I, I to, you know, to write for the next sitting. And we sat together and we said, what is it going to take? Mm. Obo said, let's, let's give it everything. Mm. And I, hes try. I hesitated because here is a child that I believe I am the superhuman in terms of the mother now. You know, she's at home. <laughs> now I must live in the care of the father. And my, yeah. you know, his child, man, on any level. Yeah. He's just yeah. laid back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but then I quickly remembered that, mm. no, it is God who is watching over all of us. Mm. So mm. experiences of hardship quickly came back and sobered me up. Mm. And I, the decision and i thought yeah. you know i mean i'm somewhat a perfectionist ne? so i kept a both of my children have got a full record for their first four years how much milk they from day one how much milk they drank how much water what when did they start to eat all the foods that have been balanced so so i, mm. I, I there's so much detail uh, um, in the last and I, you know, I, I handed the book over to Ukai Jane today. You know, I guess mm. myself, then I'll finish yeah. it. Fill in this as you go about Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. No, Zavians. But, mm. you know, when I got into that journey, mm. I was goal orientated. Mm. I put everything else to the back of my mind. Mm. I appreciated the change in routine. I had mm. to wake up at three o'clock every morning. Mm. Quarter to four, I had to leave the house mm. so that I had work seated by four o'clock to start mm. studying. Then I would mm. start from four until eight. From eight o'clock to quarter past eight, I ate breakfast so that I can start working at quarter past eight. Mm. Then I left at four o'clock so I can go for lectures, straight mm. to lectures. And I finished off around eight. I met with a group. I studied. I got home around 10. Mm. And when I got back home, I took the book. So and I you can... have this baby. You have this yeah, baby. I, I basically made peace that I, I was not going to see her. I was not interacting mm. with her. So mm. in a way, I had the privilege of being taken out of the formula. You know, mm. to my pride mm. because now I turn around and say, Yeah, it's, it's because of me that this baby is alive, you know. If it wasn't for me, so yeah, that yeah. experience was removing me from you know mm. a mini god of some sort, yeah, yeah. So, I did when I got home, I looked at the book, well, okay, she drank well, okay, she didn't have enough water, okay, whatever. Then I could make notes for the next day, yeah. The amazing thing is that, you know, God changed, you know, her sleeping pattern. So she started waking up at half past two. So I could have 30 minutes with her. Yeah. 
the morning. Yeah. yeah. Um, and there were hard mornings, my friend. There were hard mm. mornings. It was hard yeah. to wake up. Yeah. I remember anchoring on Muhammad Ali and saying, I was going to say, the day I won the championship was not on the 25th mm. October. It was whenever I got up and I trained and I didn't feel like it, you know. Yes, so, at 3 a.m. That's when you were winning. Yeah. Mm. Because when I was going through the passage and all the lights were off, I felt mm. sorry for myself. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like waking up and going to the gym and you're like, I'm the only one awake. Yeah. I felt very sorry for myself. But I want to say this to students. Ne? Mm. Our minds have no lid, literally. Hey, my we, friend. Anything we put our minds to. Is it Ellen White who says there is no limit to the usefulness? Ah. Mm. Mm. That mm. experience taught me that. Yeah. Anything we put our minds mm. to. Mm. You know? and, and, and I studied differently. I mm. stopped cheating myself. You know, when you start, you start a question, you want to see, how does this start again? How does the solution look like? Okay, you pick. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. None of that. I knew exactly. I was so prepared. When the morning came, this is the question mm. I'm doing. When mm. time is up, I draw a line and I continue. Mm. So that I mark myself. I see, given the time constraint, this is the mark I would have end. Mm. So I continue to mark because I wanted two things to be clear. Mm a shortage of knowledge or is it a clumsiness with time so i wanted to improve must i improve time and improve Mm. knowledge Mm. you know and this is how those months were refining me Mm. and Mm. it was disheartening at first but i pushed through Mm. by the time six weeks into the period i i could learn to depend on the capability of my mind to solve Mm. problems I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say that, you know, you're, I'm watching it with you, but I just think it is, it's true in general, how um, your one experience prepares you for the next. Um, and someone said that God's reward in a particular um, uh, 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 endeavor is a promotion, but it is basically mm. challenges at another level. Because mm. your, your discipline and all the skill and learnings and development that you went through as you were preparing for partner enabled you to be able to function in the role that you are in now. Where, mm. where, where I mean, Masters is operating in how many countries? Nine, ten mm. countries? I don't know. Um, you know, how, you know, that has prepared you for the role that you are in now. Talk, us, talk to us a little bit about that as well. The work that you do now versus mm. won't get the mother because now there are two we're mm. not gonna go <laughs> to the second one you know there are yeah. two now so so uh, you still have to mother full time you still mm. have to in full time you also have to be wrong you know you won't get the woman you won't get the person but you also have to be partner and it calls so much out of you but that line of that 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 with midwife continues to ring in our mm. head but anyway speak speak to that Hmm. I, I just want to say that God is faithful. Hmm. We are kept in his hand. Hmm. Um, I've realized even your strength can be your weaknesses. Yeah. I love order. You know, when I'm looking at my desk, I, 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 I align things symmetrically. So hmm. that, that's how granular I am. Hmm. And which is a strength that can be a weakness. I want to spend a few minutes talking about something that we need to pay attention to. Yeah. I call it a psychological fatigue. Mm. Okay. A lot goes on. You know, the, the more you rise on the corporate structure, mm. the more complex the landscapes. Yeah. And at times it is difficult to to switch off mm. your mind. Yeah. That's why I don't work after a certain time at night. Otherwise, literally I won't be able to fall asleep. I, mm. I, I otherwise 
just keep going until the sun comes up. High performance teams have got to mind their mental health. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing I will not, there's something I will not forget. And it leans into this verse that I love that I quoted here in Philippians 4, 4, 4 to 6. Mm -hmm. Because my balance is manageable when my devotional life is steady. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. find balance and I find peace. Mm. Because the, the, the side we don't speak about sometimes mm. is the tough side on the psychological aspect of success. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's really quite demanding and heavy. Mm. Tell us is that you build your tribe, you know, so that you can have a support system. You can never outsource your role as a parent. Mm, yeah. So as you rise, you have certain non-negotiables. Mm. So I know if I'm looking, you know, pre-COVID, I would know if I'm looking for some, I'm looking at my diary for the week and I need to attend something after hours or why I need to work late. I can't do it more than twice a week. Mm. Because my priority as a parent is that I have to be at the dinner table. Mm. That's when I connect with my kids. That's when I find out what's been going on in school. That's when I mm. detox them out of what school teaches them that's not necessarily aligned with our value system as a family. Mm. Yeah. That's when the news come out, that's when mm. you see the insecurities, that's when you see, you know, um, the exciting news, etc. So we, so for me, it's a non-negotiable. I have got to be at home. Mm. More nights than not being here. So it does yeah. mean that you sacrifice some appointments, but that's mm. important now because my our kids are quite are quite young. And it also works phenomenally as a partnership. Mm. We cannot continue to praise dads who are babysitters. Mm. And must father. Mm. Yeah, true. Mm. actively mm. in the life of their children. You cannot have a mother and a father in the home and single parent. Yeah. Mm. In the time yeah. that we are living in. So it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Mm. You know, every night, the kids know. After we pray them everything, their father is going to sit with them and tell them a story. Mm. Mm. And ask mm. questions and, 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 and really make them pray again in the bedroom. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not in that scene. I don't want to lie. So mm. I over when he's not around in, 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 in town. It's very important for us to integrate completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if he sits down to the level of the girls and they give him a door, says that I want to go pick Mac. Yeah, mm. let's make stories, you know. That's how you learn mm. on with your family. That's mm. how you, connect, you know, that's how authentic it needs to be. And mm. on, the on juggling, never compromise your girlfriends. Grow with mm. them. Yeah, because you need that aspect as well. You mm. need that aspect. So it's yeah. your balance, you know. Mm. And yeah. Allow yourself as a couple also to have fresh air. You know, yeah. go out with your friends now. Mm. You know, go for friends, uh, conference, uh, mm. um, so and so, go away for the weekend. It enriches our, our us because mm. we come back fresh and excited. Yeah. So we yeah. know each other. I'm mm. saying that because it's a long winded way of answering how do you manage all of these things? Mm. Mm. Of the is the most critical. It's got to be stable. Otherwise, it can't support. Yeah, yeah. Your private pictures, I think it's Kavi that speaks about that, is that you've, you've got to win um, in private. You've got to win at home, especially. You've got to mm. win at home. Whether you're a single parent or uh, uh, you are married, you've got to win at home. Um, and from that, actually, I find a lot of fuel to actually cope even um with with whatever it is that you're going on there all right my friend time left us a long time ago 
Um, yes. I'm going to, <laughs> to ask us to wrap up. Um, in, your, in your chapter, you've given us Ephesians 4, which, which is a verse that I absolutely, absolutely love. But you not not Ephesians Philippians, but yes. you also you also close your chapter with my favorite statement. In fact, two verses which I love. The one is is um, you know, the verse is, is behold what manner of love, you know that that God has bestowed that should that we should be called sons and daughters of God. And then and then you also use the statement of Ellen White: we have nothing to fear for the future, only as we shall forget. I'm going to ask you to close um, for us um, and then I'm just going to come in and make concluding remarks and then um, and then we end this session. If Jesus was to come right mm. now, there would have been ample opportunity for us to be converted. There would have been ample evidence of his being, his salvation, and his promises of soon coming. And therefore, you know, when we look back, just like the children of God took 12 stones out of the river Jordan and erected a monument, and God said, when your children shall ask, what is the significance of these stones? You tell them how the Lord had carried you. So, really reflecting on, on those words of Ellen White, that you have nothing to fear for the future. If you look at the Bible, the Bible is full of, you know, narratives that says, do not worry, do not be anxious, do not worry, do not be anxious. It's because that is how the, the enemy attacks us. First, they want us fearful. And the only reason we can fear is because we have taken charge of our lives and put it on our own shoulders. We are not the ones that the devil is at war with. He is at war with God. And we are here to prove that God is faithful. You know, when we hang on, that's all that God says. He says, you know, when we hold on to him, we transform our joys and our challenges to God himself and says, Lord, show up, show up in my life. And it silences our cleverness. It silences our cleverness and we yeah. lean on God. Yeah. I think, you know, there are many, many stories I could have told here. But the sum total, when I reflect on each and every one of them, is mm. saying, Trust, put your trust in God. Yeah, yeah. And hence, I, I, will, I will conclude by saying, when I say my mantra is that God is faithful, mm. you know, it's one of the promises I claim all the time. Mm. Yeah, Irrespective yeah. of which situation I am going through or my children are going through or we as a family are challenged by. But mm. when it dawns on me that God is faithful, I start to utter Romans 8, 28. Yes, ma'am. Work together for good for them who love Oh, God. yeah. That's Even my verse. For them who are called according to his purpose. When mm. God is faithful, dawns on me. It then mm. says to me, the situation being, you know, in front of you is insignificant. Mm. Because yeah. he has the ability, he's working out something that mm. is going to come out of the goodness of this narrative. Mm. When I mean, Isaac was going up this mountain. The lamb was going up the other side. That's yes, what mm. our lives. You know? mm. so, so, mm. so when I'm tense, I just remember it is a lamb. Yeah. Mm. And I don't mm. see the story, but Lord, allow me to grasp, Jay. To keep going. Mm. You, the feet climb your right hand. And that would be mm. sufficient to pull me out of this water that I'm drowning yeah. in. You know, God is a jealous God. And all he tries to do is say, He's a cool. come, come closer to yeah. me. Come, come closer to me. So when I look at all the disappointments, and then I then see, but okay, yeah. I am wondering now. I am wondering. Yeah. And actually, yeah. 
when you start to see the silver lining, it's more than a silver lining. But no, no, Masekaya, God loves us. Yeah. Perfectly. Mm. And that mm. is our inheritance. As a chonga, we will say, hey man, mm. how ridiculous it was that I was always, almost, almost giving up this wealthy inheritance. Mm. Because I got, just so that I can worship this house. Mm. Just so that I can hey. worship your hey. so hey. partner, just so hey. that I can worship being a good parent. You know, God is detoxing us of self. Mm. Mm. And he, he is positioning himself so that God is, is stronger. He sees himself. When he reflects mm. on us, he wants to see himself. What yeah. an mm. absolute privilege. Yeah. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, my friend. I, I have been inspired. I was inspired by the book. I was now I have something to 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 put in the in the spaces where I had had gaps, but more than anything, Wenabongi, thank you for showing us by your life, by your words, um, that statement of Ellen White. I we love the statement in my house, there's no limit. No limit to the usefulness of one who, putting self aside, mm. makes room for the working of the Holy Spirit upon his or her heart and lives a life wholly consecrated to God. Thank you for giving us an example that it is possible for a girl from, I don't know if the streets of Guguletu and Kailicha are dusty, but from the humble beginnings of Guguletu mm. and the humble beginnings of Kailicha brought up by a single mother that it is possible to rise to the place where god wants you to be and mm. um, because you're responding you know the, the the theme of of this and as i'm closing of of uh, the theater of grace ministry is living our best lives powered by god's grace it is my strong mm. conviction that god's grace is not only um something that we we must think about when we think about forgiveness of our sins where we would talk about unmerited favor, unmerited when God covers, that's mercy. When God mm. chooses not to punish you for what you've done, that's mercy. But grace comes before you. Grace precedes you. God says, this is where I want you to come. And as you say, I'm calling, up, I'm calling you up to this level, but go up this side of the mountain and I'm going to go up the other side. And I will give you all the things that are necessary. Um, you will still have the family. You will still have children. And I will give a challenge at that as well to prove to you that I'm in charge. And the lessons you learned, Bongi, uh, the, the, the God of the impossibilities that you saw from that tiny little baby that came out of hospital with a transparent body, I'm sure you take those and you apply those in the boardroom as and when the time requires. So, so my challenge and my encouragement to all of us uh this evening ladies let us allow god to do with us as he pleases and then watch where he takes us and then as he takes us cooperate with him such that when we get to the sea of glass we can mm. indeed look him straight in the eye and present the however many years of life that he has given us and he can look straight back at us and say well done good and faithful servant you were you were faithful in each of those levels and as i kept bringing you up you kept being faithful and because you were faithful here i kept calling you higher and you were faithful there and because you were faithful there i kept calling you higher that is what we mm. talk about when we talk about the grace the grace of god anyway let's close it we've completely run out of time thank mm. you so much everybody for joining us if you came in late, please subscribe to Afrolog TV so that you can help us spread the message of grace. Also, if you missed, let me put the details again. Um, for those of you who might want a copy of the book, those are the details. You can contact me, you can contact, send me a WhatsApp, and then we can talk about how I can get the book to you. And as we often say, the proceeds of this book, all of them, 100% of the proceeds of this book, go towards the work of the real village, which is reconstruction and empowerment of Africa. 
through love. Thank you so much. Let's just close our eyes in prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you for the gift of your grace. Thank you for the life uh, and everything that you have done to her and for her, because not only was it for her benefit, not only was it for her teaching, for her lessons, but Lord, here we are also benefiting. Thank you for what you are doing and for what you are about to do in her life, because in doing it to her, you're doing it to us and you're doing it for us. May you continue, dear Lord, to take charge of every part and every aspect of her life. Lord, as you do so, I pray a blessing over each and every one of us that are here in this meeting at this moment and whoever will get to listen to this uh, 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 recording at whatever time and point in their lives. Oh dear, all we ask is that you make it dawn to us deep in our hearts and our minds that by your grace, you want to empower us. By your grace, you want to uplift us. By your grace, you want to move us to the place that you had for us when you have given us life for every day that you give us. You have given us the power to live that day to the best, to live our best life. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for us this evening. We ask all this in your wonderful name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us. We're now going to end the broadcast.